expertise and experience amongst our counselors, uh, industry-wide and also um, in particular areas. We have about 70 volunteers and uh, what we offer our clients is a one-on-one -on -one counseling and mentoring service. And uh, you can meet with us as many times as you like. We discuss all anything uh, you would like to, uh, to learn more and need help with in your business. And um, you can meet with us. They're free, one-hour sessions. You can meet as many times with as many different councils as you like. We also do a number of webinars. We probably average about 100 webinars a, a, a year in the, this area. And we are a, uh, affiliated with the Small Business Administration. And uh, we, uh, we are partner with them in a number of different areas. And as you can see here on the mentoring, we do it via video, phone, or email. Um, if you have had a mentor in the past and would like to have a little tune-up, we'd we'll be happy to do that. And uh, you can also self-schedule on our website. You could give us a call at our office. And if you are interested in uh, meeting with somebody, please feel free to type into the um, chat room uh, your name, and uh, we would be happy to reach out to you. Also let us know how you would like to be contacted by, by phone or email. And uh, we'd be happy to reach out to you and schedule an appointment with one of our counselors. Um, a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, we um, are going, we asked to use the Q&A instead of the chat. Oops, Jerry's running in here. Um, and uh, we will email you the link in the recording afterwards. And we do have a little short survey after the webinar that we really do appreciate your signing um, or uh, completing. The other thing on the, on the uh, question and answers, please, if you can, uh, ask questions related to the current topic that uh, Debbie is speaking about. Uh, most likely she will address, uh, address your questions in, in future sections. And if not, we would be happy to, to address them at the end of the presentation. And there's your Q&A in the chat. And a little bit about our presenter, uh, Debbie Vogt is uh, CEO and founder of, of, e of Harmony um, Bookkeeping and she's located in Natick. And um, Debbie works with small businesses and uh, she uh, can provide help with your financial record keeping and uh, definitely personalize the service specifically for you and to help you through um, the bookkeeping that we're sure you are not as familiar with as Debbie is. Um, so I am going to turn it over to Deborah now and uh, let her speak a little bit more about her qualifications and um, we're good to go. So thank you for joining us. All right, thanks so much, Gloria. It's terrific to be here. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Let me see here. All right, perfect. So, well, thanks, Gloria. Uh, yes, I'm Debbie Vogt. I'm with Harmony Bookkeeping. I have been Harmony three years ago. After about 10 years of being out on my own as a solo bookkeeper, the need for bookkeeping is so strong in the area that we now have a staff of six. We work with dozens and dozens of clients, many of whom are in Massachusetts, but also other parts of New England and also out of New England. And twice a month, I run a noontime workshop that's free for business owners to stop in. It's a Zoom call, ask some questions you may have or learn about whatever the topic at hand is. In many cases, I do enjoy talking about financial reporting and helping new business owners to understand how to interpret their financial reports so that they can get that more detail about their company. So definitely here in Harmony, we have a great passion for uh, small businesses. So this is what we're going to talk about today. So our agenda, I know we are going to jump into the software. We're going to have a chance to look at QuickBooks Desktop and do a number of transactions there, entries there, which then I'll repeat in QuickBooks Online. So you'll have a great comparison from one to the other. But before we jump into there, I think it's also important to stop for a minute and talk about bookkeeping just briefly as a topic. What is it? why it's important to you as a business owner. We'll talk about financial accounting systems in general, just uh, kind of uh, touch on that topic. Then we'll talk about the features specific to QuickBooks Desktop and QuickBooks Online. We'll do a demo of each and then have some, some conversation about how to decide which of the two is right for you. Oh, no, I came in right after. All right, so talking about what exactly is bookkeeping. So there's a, you know, bookkeeping defined 
So the activity or occupation of keeping the financial records of a business. I think one of the things to highlight with bookkeeping, regardless of who's doing it, is that it needs to be the careful recording of the daily financial transactions. It is a detailed thing to do. It does take some time, but here we have our example our, of bookkeeping used in a sentence. I got in a financial muddle because I didn't keep my bookkeeping up to date. I love that example because financial model is probably the best term to use for someone who doesn't keep their bookkeeping up to date and what happens when they need it. So when we talk about the recording of the daily financial transactions, let's talk about what daily financial transactions might be made up of. So it's made up of any time money coming is coming in and money can come into a business from several sources. It could be the business revenue, the income you're making from providing your service or your goods to your clients. It could be cash loans received. So that's money coming in. It's not income, but let's say you received a loan to help grow or to help start your business. Maybe you have a PPP loan. That's money coming into the business or cash coming into the business. So that's something that we track. And any personal investment of cash. So when you first started your business, maybe you opened your business bank account with $500 from your personal account. We want to track that in bookkeeping as well. Again, it's not revenue or income because it's not money that you made that you'll be taxed on, but it's money that came into the account. So different ways that money, money comes in. There's also a number of ways that money goes out through payroll, through the purchases you need to make to run your business, whether it's cost of goods sold, where you're buying components that kind of make up your product or your service. You're making credit card payments if you're a business that uses a credit card or loan payments. We talked about that cash loan before. Money going out is a loan payment. Every business will have some amount of liabilities or may have some amount of liabilities. That's also recorded in bookkeeping. So again, talking about that loan received, we know it's cash that came into the account, but it's also going to be documented as a liability. It's money that that business now owes to someone or some entity. And that balance is tracked so that as you pay it back, you can start to see that going down over time. Equipment loans. Some businesses have equipment loans or loans for vehicles that are needed in the, in the functioning of their business. And also any credit card purchases. Those are paid back more immediately, but until they're paid back, they're considered a liability. That's also tracked. And then businesses often have assets. Now, assets, of course, is your cash. So you would have an asset there, but you may have inventory. Or again, talking about the equipment or the truck. So all of these are tracked in bookkeeping and tracked in a number of different ways. Now, if you see at the bottom of the screen, that's my little editorial there of what bookkeeping is not. And bookkeeping is not the recording of personal transactions in a business account. So I do encourage anyone, if you've been doing that, if you have a business account and you use it as a personal account as well, the bank account, that you find a way to divide that. And the same with a credit card. If you have a personal credit card and you're using it for a lot of business expenses, look to see if you can get a business card because keeping those separate is going to make your bookkeeping far, far easier down the road. Why would bookkeeping be important to you as a business owner? Well, first is the analysis that you get. So when all your bookkeeping is in and the account is reconciled, and we'll talk about that, and you're looking at your financial reporting to see how it all played out over a period of time, the reporting you get from solid bookkeeping will help you understand where you need to invest more money. Maybe you can see through your bookkeeping that you have a product line that's going gangbusters and it's a great profit source for you. Well, that's good to know. So you can put more money there if it's bringing in more money than other areas. But you could also look and see an area that's slow an area that you want to develop more and you see your revenue from that isn't as high as you would like. So then what you might do is put more money to that so that you can increase your business there. But putting your bookkeeping information in, the transactions and getting the reporting is going to help you with that. So you'll see what's profitable, what's different. You're going to see what it costs you to make your product or deliver your service, which will help you to decide if you're charging enough. So perhaps you look and say, yes, I have a great profit margin or I need a little bit more profit margin. You can tell that through your reporting and your bookkeeping and how much you can pay yourself. I can't tell you how many times I have business owners say, I haven't paid myself in six months because I don't know if I can pay myself. Well, when you've got the information in your financial report, you'll be able to see what's going on and you can feel good about paying yourself and know how much to pay yourself and how often. Another reason why bookkeeping would be important to you as a business owner is if at some point you might want to have take out a loan. Maybe you have an opportunity to take over the retail space next to you or to take on a new product line or to grow in some way. And you need some cash to do that. So you go to a lending institution, either your bank or your credit union or someone you know who's an investor. And they're going to say, you're going to go and say, I have this great opportunity. It just came up and I want to grow my business, but I need some more money to do that. And they're going to feel your excitement. They're going to say, great 
you came to the right place. We love making loans to small business owners. Can we see your financial reports? Now, if you have financial reports that you can hand over and they're well documented and they show the path your business has taken, that's going to be a huge advantage. They're going to say, terrific, great, let's talk. If you say, well, I, I don't really have my financials. I have some receipts and I track everything, you know, on a piece of paper. I know I've got everything somewhere. Chances are you're going to miss that opportunity. So keeping up to date with your bookkeeping is going to allow you to take advantage of opportunities that come along to grow your business that maybe you don't anticipate. And I will just give a quick example. Last May, or I'm sorry, last March and April, something came around called the PPP loan. You may be familiar with it. We had a number of businesses reach out to us who said, we need to apply for this, but our financials aren't in order and we can't document what we need to document to get the loan. How quickly can you help us? And of course, at that time, we didn't know there was going to be multiple funding and it was going to go on through August. It was a big crunch. And there were a lot of upset business owners trying to get their information together for an unexpected thing, the opportunity to apply for a PPP. So again, keeping up to date with your bookkeeping will allow you to take care, of, take advantage of things you might not see at this moment. And someday, and it's often said, the day to start thinking about your, your exit plan for your business is the day you start your business. Someday you may have the opportunity to sell your business. You may be ready to retire, pass it down to someone, sell it to a third party. And again, one of the things they're going to want to be able to do that, and so you can get the most value from your business, is they're going to want the historical financial data. You're going to want to be able to say to them, yes, we have tended to our bookkeeping all along the way, and we can document our profitability and our expenses and what you'd be you know, taking on when you buy it. So again, being prepared for that. And I did say for last, the Department of Revenue, they are very interested in how much money your business earned. And they're also interested in what your, what your tax write-offs will be, your, your expenses. So keeping up with the bookkeeping will help you with your federal and state tax filing. And if you're a business that needs to pay sales tax, the software will help you do that as well. So these are some of the reasons why the bookkeeping is important to every business owner. Uh, uh, Debbie, could you go a little bit slower? I sure can. Thank okay. you. Um, do you need to be good at math to do bookkeeping? I've had people say that to me. I can't do bookkeeping. I'm lousy at math. Well, I'll tell you, to, to own a business, having a good command of the basic math skills, addition, subtraction, division, multiplication is going to serve anybody very well. But utilizing bookkeeping software means your job isn't about math. The software will do the math for you. It's really to classify your transactions and get them in the right account. You don't have to worry about the math. So if you're not good at math, no problem. Doesn't mean you can't do your books. It's about classification. And you may be familiar with the, the professions of bookkeeping and accounting. Um, while we do not do the same things, we do go hand in hand. We work together. Bookkeepers are, we're about really reporting and organizing the daily financial data. Doesn't mean it needs to be done every day, but we're, we're recording what's happening each day. We might do it on a bi-weekly basis or a monthly basis, but it's recording everything in the financial software. It's going through the reports with the business owner, or in your case, you know, keeping up with your software you know, keeping up with your transactions, looking at your reports, making sure things look great to you, that they ring true and with that gut feeling of, yeah, that seems about what I earned last year. So you feel like the numbers are good. And then when those reports are done, they go to the accountant or the CPA. And that's the person who will provide the analysis. They'll look at the numbers and they'll tell you more about the story of your business. They may have some advice for you on how and when to invest, what to do at the end of the year to make it for an easier next year for tax-wise. They'll also prepare your tax filings. So bookkeeping is about the everyday reporting and accounting isn't so much about the numbers and the individual transactions as it is looking at the whole picture that's provided on the report. So if you don't have a, an accountant to CPA, I do recommend that you get one. They're going to be a great ally to you as you start your business with great advice. They can also refer you to resources that you may need. So I would say to um, establish a great relationship with a CPA that you really like and that you connect with they're going to be very helpful to you. And here we go. So there are some terms that are specific to the bookkeeping world. That is a business owner you need to have a working knowledge with. And you'll receive this presentation so you don't need to certainly, you know, go through and, and look at everything or memorize it by any stretch. But I did want to make sure you were introduced to these terms because they will play a part as you do your bookkeeping. So we've already talked about income, 
the money that comes in as a result of sales or service, sales of product or service. The expenses, the cost of running your business, the assets, which we already identified, could be cash, equipment, the AR, which is the money of your customers owe you. Liability, that's what the company owes. So either a loan, a credit card, or accounts payable, which is how you pay what we call paying your vendors. The net profit and loss, when we look at the financial reports, we'll see that as that's what's often called the bottom line. Um, and that is what you brought in in income, less the expenses, and what was left over at the end of the year, the end of the month, the end of the quarter. Your chart of accounts, we're going to talk about, and we'll, I'll show you a chart of accounts in both QuickBooks Desktop and QuickBooks Online. And that's the list of accounts. It's what I call the backbone of the bookkeeping system. And it's the accounts to which all financial transactions are categorized. So everything that comes in or goes out of your business is going to fit into one of these accounts. And that's also going to be displayed on the financial reports. And that's going to tell a part of the story of how your business did during any period. The cost of goods sold is what it costs for you to purchase the items that you need to run your business. Not all businesses have costs of goods sold. Credit, and this is when we talk about the double entry accounting. We'll talk about it a little bit. Um, so we have, and if you think of credits, not in the way that you might normally think of a credit, but we think of credits and debits as credits being the right-hand side of the entry and the debits being the left-hand side of the entry. Equity is how much the business owner has in that business, how much of that business they own versus what's planned as a liability, what their investment is. Financial statements, we'll take a look at those both in desktop and online. And that's the reports that are produced by you at the end of the month, the end of the quarter, the end of the year, based on the entry, the information that was entered. What's also nice when you use financial software for a couple of years, you can do comparison reports. So there may be a time where you wanna see how you did this October as compared to prior Octobers. You can run a report that will tell you that, or how did your business perform in Q1 versus Q3? So QuickBooks will allow you to get a lot of different information from your financial statements. And a payable is a bill that's due to be paid to one of our vendors. We call that accounts payable or AP, which I referenced above. And receivable, that's money that's due to you from a customer. That's considered an asset of the company because it's money that somebody owes you. So that's just a few of the bookkeeping terms. And we'll talk about each of those today. So how does using financial software benefit you as a business owner? Well, if we think of financial software versus the alternative, which is tracking it by hand or using a spreadsheet, which are ways that people have done. I mean, bookkeeping as a profession, I think was from 2600 BC. It's a pretty old profession. What, how, we, how we do it is differently now, but the net result is the same. But if you were to use financial software, such as we're gonna be talking about, it's going to automate your bookkeeping greatly. And like I said, it's going to do the math. It's going to have you do the recording of the transactions and the coding, but um, not have to take care of the math part. It will also, also allow you to record transactions by class. So perhaps you have multiple locations and you want to see how the businesses are doing and what the income and expenses are in each location. You can do that. It's going to manage the general ledger, which is just the full list of everything that happens in your business that you record, as well as the receivables, who owes you money, and the payables, who you owe. It will allow you to track your cash flow, your revenue, and your expenses. It will help you track your sales tax, which is especially helpful for those who collect sales tax and need to remit that to the state. And it allows you to run reports that help you understand how your business is performing. So financial software has a lot of benefits for a business owner. So I'll take a break here, Teresa, if we have any questions. No, I don't have any questions posted at this time. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right, so now let's talk a little bit more about the accounting systems and what's available. I already touched on the paper ledgers. So old school, handwriting out all the transactions. And when you do that, you can do that. You need to include all the detail, the date, who you collected money from or who you paid, what the purpose was, how much it was. It's a lot of high effort writing all of that down and making sure that you have it all. So the next step up from that would be tracking it on a spreadsheet. Some people are great with Excel and they love it. And it's a good way for them to track the same thing and all the same detail. 
Um, and if you're good with Excel, it's terrific. It might be a good short term, but it's not really a long term solution for a business that plans to grow. But sometimes it's a, it's a little bit of a good way to get started. But do keep in mind that it's not always a great system to then once you want to start using financial software to upload your spreadsheet transactions into financial software with the detail that you would like. So that brings us to software applications. These are contemporary. Most of them are made for end users, meaning business owners, as opposed to accounting professionals, and they have great functionality. So we'll talk about QuickBooks in some great detail this morning. But you may also be familiar with FreshBooks, which is a commonly used accounting software, another called Xero, Wave, or Quicken. So two things that I want to mention here, I'll talk about free software in a minute, but Quicken. If you're using Quicken or if you're considering using Quicken, keep in mind Quicken is not business financial software. It's personal financial software. It's household financial software. So it's a great way to track the income and expenses that come into your home, but it's not going to provide you with the financial reports that you need as a business. So if you're considering using Quicken, I would ask you not to, not to use that for your business, but to use one of the other financial accounting programs. If you're using Quicken now, and you may, may be using it successfully, think about if that's going to be the end game for you. If you need to transact, transition out of Quicken sooner rather than later, it will import into QuickBooks. It will not keep all the detail. So if you think you're going to switch out of Quicken, I would ask you to do that sooner rather than later. And now we're worried about free software because if you haven't already found online, you can find free accounting software. You search free accounting software and a lot of options will come up. Before you use that, I do encourage you to really look in the detail of what they're offering. What do you get for free? At what point do they start charging? Because free is only free for so long and then there's going to be a charge. And what are they charging for? And how much is it? The other thing I would encourage you to find out ahead of time before you start with free software is how can I get it out of this application and into something like QuickBooks later? Will it work? Does it transition over? Will it keep all the information? Because it would be very hard to get started in a direction with a product because there's no cost, but only to find out the greater cost comes down the road when you want to get out of that application and into something else. And the reason I know that about free software and the reason I know that about Quicken is because we do have, have companies that come to us for us to help them get out of those applications. So we see what it takes. So I would encourage you to stick with, and I'm going to promote Quicken here. I, I do not work for Quicken. I don't, I mean, QuickBooks, I do not work for QuickBooks. Um, I don't have an attachment to, to, to their business other than I, I use them, but I would encourage you if you have not yet started to use a product like QuickBooks for your business, as opposed to Quicken or free software that you would find online. Debbie, I do have a question about um, mm -hmm. the different types of software. Someone's asking, can you compare Sage to QuickBooks? Um, they're looking at transferring Sage 50 Cloud to the QuickBooks Desktop Premier. Do you have any advice on that? Um, what I can say is I am a big fan of Sage. Uh, I think they make a great product. I, I used it. I think it's what I learned on. It's what I used first. Um, but as far as using one or the other or converting from one to the other, I do not have experience with a conversion I'd have to look at it a little bit more. So I'm sorry, I do not have a good answer for you. I would be curious why you're looking to change because I do think you're already on a good product, but there might be a, you know, a reason that you have to switch, but just be sure that you know that you need to change before you do switch like that. So hopefully that's a little bit helpful. Thank you. So let's talk about QuickBooks. Let's talk about the pros and the cons. So the pros are it's widely used. So there's a great thing about QuickBooks is if you need support, you can find it really easily. You may have friends who own businesses who use it. You can do quick searches, but it's widely used. A lot of people are familiar with QuickBooks. It's considered end user software. So it's made for the consumer. It's made for the business owner to use. Doesn't, you know, there's a learning curve, but it's made for, for you to use. It's not accounting professional software, though we use it extensively as well. It will sync with your bank and credit cards meaning once you connect the two, anytime a transaction happens in your bank, it automatically downloads it and it's in your QuickBooks application. And the same with the credit card. So it does some of the work for you in automating it, going back to what we said about using software for automation. It has excellent reporting. It has more reporting than we could, than we could ever talk about in a training session. And you can look and you can experiment with it and see what kind of reports speak to you. So a lot of great reporting. There are user groups, there's free advice, you can, again, just do a quick search online and with your question and guaranteed you're going to find an answer and someone who experienced that before 
and can offer you some advice. This is what we find. Bookkeepers are fluent in QuickBooks. When we find people use other applications like Quicken and even FreshBooks, bookkeepers aren't as, as fluent in those because our clients don't typically use those when they're big and growing businesses. So it's just not, you know, you'll find a, a, a bookkeeper who might be able to help you, but you're not going to find as many if you're using something else. We all know QuickBooks. QuickBooks is continually improving their product. They're offering enhancements, doing, you know, offering new ways of doing things. So it's not a stagnant product. There's really a lot going on there, which is nice. They have great customer support and they have integrate, integrated applications. You can integrate your payroll if you're using a payroll provider, your credit card processor. So all kinds of different um, applications you can integrate with QuickBooks, whether it's desktop or online. So it's a wonderful product. So there are some downsides. There's a cost. It's not free software. You can decide based on what product you're using, whether you're going to be paying monthly or annually. There's definitely a learning curve. So if you're not familiar with QuickBooks, you know, while it is end user software, you will need to learn. You need to know a little bit about bookkeeping and then you need to know a bit about QuickBooks to be successful with it because it's the double entry accounting format in both desktop and online. The integrations that I referenced can be excellent. They don't always work. So sometimes there's some frustration there where a certain integrated application isn't working in QuickBooks for any given reason. So you need to back up and take a look at that a little bit. And it's the good news, bad news. You know, it's widely used. It's the largest game in town. So if it doesn't suit you, it can be frustrating. Um, but in general, I think it's, it's going to work well for you. So we'll talk about QuickBooks desktop first. There are Maybe many versions. Questions related to that topic. Is that mm -hmm. okay? Sure thing. Um, is a solo business owner, uh, for example, a realtor, is QuickBooks appropriate? Yes, absolutely. I think it, it would, it's, we have many solo business owners who utilize QuickBooks. And what would you say the second most popular after QuickBooks is? Um, Sage, as somebody's already mentioned, is one. Uh, FreshBooks is probably another one. And I do think Zero is gaining in popularity. So those are the others that I hear about most often. Okay, thank you. Sure thing. All right, so QuickBooks Desktop has multiple versions available. The differences has to do with features and pricing. Um, all, the, all the versions will track your income and expenses. You can actually track your time in QuickBooks. If you have inventory, sales tax, you can do income and expenses by job or class, and you can send estimate and invoices and run your financial reports. So all versions will do that. The higher end versions will do some work, such as forecasting, barcoding, order fulfillment. Now important now, this is where QuickBooks Desktop and online are gonna diverge right here. And this is about how you access it. So QuickBooks Desktop is installed on one computer. You need to have access to that computer to use QuickBooks Desktop. So if you install it and it's your laptop that you use every day and you've always got it with you and that's great and you've got it there and it's always accessible to you. If, there, if you keep it on a QuickBooks on a computer that you have in your office and some evening or weekend you're at home and you wanna access your QuickBooks, either you're going to have to go into your office or have some remote software such as TeamViewer or Splashtop to be able to access it because that's going to live on that computer. If you're using that computer and you'd like someone to help you with your, with your bookkeeping, they're only going to be able to access it when you're not using that computer because only one person at a time is going to be able to use that computer even if they're remoting in. So that's a big difference with QuickBooks is you need with QuickBooks desktop is it's going to live in one place, which for many people is absolutely fine. And it's scalable software, it's going to grow, you know, you'll be able to grow and use the same software. And if at any time you want to switch to QuickBooks online, you can go ahead and make that change. Going from QuickBooks online back to QuickBooks desktop, I wouldn't recommend it. So it's really a one way street when you go from desktop to online. So now let's look at QuickBooks Desktop. And actually, oh, I have screenshots and examples that we're actually going to go into a live application that QuickBooks allows us to use. Teresa has the link to this. These are training sites that everybody can access through QuickBooks. And you can follow along with what I have, or if you have another, if you want to do a divided screen, you can go ahead and take a look at it that way. We're going to look at Carl's Computer Shop. And in particular, we're going to look at the dashboard, the banking, invoicing, reports, and the chart of accounts. So let me see, I'm going to switch my screen here and change over. And can someone confirm that you can see Carl's? Yes, computer? we can see it. And I did put that link 
that you're using right now into the chat if anyone wants to do a split screen and follow along that way. Perfect. Okay. This is QuickBooks Desktop. And I'll give you a minute just to, this is, you know, what we call the dashboard. And I'll give you just a minute to take a look. There's a lot going on here. If you were to use QuickBooks Desktop, you may have some of these icons. You may not have all. It will be specific to how you use it. We're not going to talk about all the icons today. We're going to talk about some of them. But I just wanted to give you a minute to kind of get your eyes set on it and see what we're looking at here. And then we'll break it down and talk about it. With, with all QuickBooks products, there are multiple ways to do the same thing. And I'll show you how we do that here with a couple of things. So I'm going to break down this dashboard and look at it for the sections that it's divided out in. So if we look here, we have the word vendor. This is called the vendor center. All these transactions that they know here, all these icons, are things you would typically do related to your vendor, such as enter a bill or pay that bill. You might enter a bill against inventory. Inventory might not be something you have for your business, in which case you wouldn't see that there. And they give you some arrows that give you an idea of the workflow and how things go. Now, when we click on Vendor Center, I click on Vendor here, it's going to list all the vendors of the company. I'll expand this a little bit. And you can see, now this is a QuickBooks training database. There's a lot of data already in here. Most of it we won't talk about, but just it's nice to have some things populated. And you can see these are vendors to whom Carl, because this is Carl's computer shop, to whom Carl owes money. So we see this because Carl entered these bills or his person entered these bills. So this is a, the vendor list for Carl. So we can go back here, go back to home, which is our dashboard. We can also get to Vendor Center by clicking here, Vendor Center. And it's going to take us there as well. And then last, the third way is we have Vendor right here. And you'll see, we can get there that way. So different ways to do the same thing. After the Vendor Center, we'll look at the Customer Center. So this is the big middle of the screen. And these again are things that you might do with your customer, like create an invoice or a statement. You'll receive a payment, which you might do by a credit card. So we our issue a refund. So this is the customer center. And when we click on customer, it's set up a lot like the vendor center. So it's familiar already. Though now, instead of the list of vendors, these are lists of customers. And instead of the list of how much Carl owes, this is what's owed to Carl from his customers. So we can see he has invoices out. Most of his customers are up to date, but he's got some invoices that are outstanding. And we can go ahead when we want to get to the customer center, we can click here like I just did. You can go up here to where it says customer and go to customer center, or you can choose it from here too. All ways lead to the same place. There's also an employee center, and this is used for businesses that utilize the QuickBooks payroll module. So we're not going to talk about this today, but just so you can see, again, it's set up in a very similar fashion. So instead of the vendors or the customers, these are now the employees and you can look at what the paychecks were and the breakdown of the detail of the paychecks. And you can also get there through the employee center here. What we will talk about today is the banking center. So this is an area you might use more frequently than any other because it gets you to your check register. You reconcile, you see what deposits you have to bring to the bank. And then also company information, which is general company information. So this is the example of the desktop we have for QuickBooks. Uh, the dashboard that we have for QuickBooks Desktop. So now I'm going to go through and do a few things. The first thing I want to show you is the chart of accounts, which I mentioned a little bit earlier, and that's the list of accounts that every business has. So when you first start with QuickBooks, whether it's desktop or online, the application will ask you what industry you're in, and based on that, it will make a recommendation for your chart of accounts, which you can then enhance or you can take away. So if there's some that you want to have, more information, more detail you'd like, you can always add that in. And if there's some accounts that you'll just never use, you can go ahead and remove those from your view so you don't have to see them. And they're divided out. If we go to the top, we'll see the bank accounts. So if we look at Carl, he's got a checking account with $108,000 in it, so good for Carl. He's got a couple of cash registers, a clearing account. We won't talk about that today. Savings account. And here are his accounts receivables. We looked at what his customers owe him when we went to the customer center. This is the sum total of what the customers owe him. I'm actually going to bring this over so we kind of have it closer. It's a little bit easier to see. All right. There we go. So we can see what people owe Carl. We can see he's got some inventory, some money. He's got to do a bank run. He's got some money in his undeposited funds. He's got fixed assets. He's got cars and trucks, and he's also got furniture and equipment. That's something that's tracked as far as the value. And then his accountant helps him with his depreciation entry. 
He owes vendors some money, so $20,580 he owes his vendors. He's got some payroll liabilities. And now we can look at how he divides up the income that comes into his business. He likes to divide up his sales in different categories. You might choose to do the same thing. These would not have come with QuickBooks. These would be things that Carl would have added based on what he likes for his reporting. He's got some cost of goods sold, but the overwhelming majority of his accounts are expense accounts. Meals and entertainment. These may be expenses you'll have. Automobile expense, insurance, merchant fees. If you accept credit cards, you wanna track how much of that profit goes out in merchant fees, office expenses, and so on. And these you will add and customize as you see fit. The way you would do that is down here. You can add a new account. You can edit an account. So perhaps QuickBooks adds an account that you like. You just want to tweak the wording a little bit. And you can delete it if it's something that you don't want to have and you don't need. QuickBooks will not let you delete any account that has money in that account or attributed to that account. So you don't have to worry about deleting an account and ruining something. If there's something in there, it's not going to let you delete it. And deleting just hides it. They use the word delete when you think of the word hide. So all businesses will have a chart of accounts that will be specific to their business. Many will have account numbers. QuickBooks doesn't have account numbers signed here. It does help facilitate it, but it's not essential. So let's go back here. And now that we know what the chart of accounts looks like, because we'll start seeing those accounts in just a minute, I thought we'd go through and enter a bill, just a bill to get started. So for Carl, we're going to go ahead and he received a bill from Bayshore Water his water utility company. Um, please, I think I mentioned, if not, that the dates are old. The, the application is current, even though the data that QuickBooks has in there is dated. So we put in Bayshore Water. It automatically brings up the address because Carl went ahead and added that in. It also lets us know that Bayshore Water invoices have a payable 30-day term, a net 30. So he doesn't have to pay that bill right away. If he needs to hold on to his cash for a little bit longer, he doesn't really have to pay that bill for 30 days. So it's good to know so that he can still pay it on time, but not pay it sooner than he needs to, so he can hold on to his cash and maybe use for another immediate purpose. So it will default to that day's date or what date they have here. I would encourage you to always put in the bill number, the invoice number from your vendors. If you ever need to go back and track, it's going to be a great help to you. So if I look at the bill here, I can say that his bill for Bayshore Water is $500. And QuickBooks has already said, okay, well, it's dated 1218. It's payable in 30 days, so it's due on 117. Great. Now, if you wanted to put a memo here to go on the payment when you when you print it, you can. You do not need to. But I'm going to go ahead and we know this is a water utility and it's $500 to the water utility. So I'm going to pause for a minute and talk about classes because this is a great example of you being able to divide up your expenses maybe by location. So we're going to go ahead and say that Carl has this $500 utility bill, $250 for one location. 250s for another one. And he wants to make sure he captures that in his bookkeeping. So when he runs his reports, he can see how much each location is costing him in water utility. So what I will do here is I will, instead of $500, they're evenly divided. And I'm going to go ahead and pick the class that his Bayshore store owns half of that $500 bill from the water utility. And his San Thomas store owns the other part. So Bayshore Water is going to get their whole $500, but in his in Carl's books, he's going to know that $250 was for one location and $250 was for the other. And then we save it, and he's recorded that bill. Lather, rinse, repeat when you receive bills from vendors. You're going to do that again and again to become very good at that. But now let's say it's time to pay that bill. So we're going to go to pay bills. Sorry if I went faster. Let me go back. So here we have the icon that says pay bills. So we're going to go ahead and pay the bills. Now, because there's a lot of data in this, we're just gonna focus on our bill from Bayshore Water. So here it is, here's that $500 bill that needs to be paid. So I'll put the date that I want it paid. We're gonna pay by check, though we're not gonna print it right now. We're gonna be able to say, I'm gonna print all my checks together later, but let's go ahead and get this bill paid. It's going to be paid from my checking account because this is going to get recorded so that I have it recorded in the right spot. And I'm gonna go ahead and pay the selected bill. And it's going to tell me, here it is. And I can either say pay more bills if I want to go back to that bill payment screen. I can print the check right then if I want. But I'm going to say done because I'm going to save all that for later. And now we've entered the bill and we've gone ahead and paid the bill. So let's see real quickly. We'll go to the check register. And here we see that Bayshore water bill that we paid 
for $500 has now been taken out of our account. So now we know that $500 is already earmarked for Bayshore Water. And if I wanna look at it, I can see, this is our bill right here. It looks like he's got an existing bill he hasn't paid yet for 123, but here's our $500 bill that we paid. There we go. So let's do one more thing here. Let's enter another bill and let's enter this one for, um, this one's going to be billable to a client. It's Holly Electronics. And we're gonna put in the invoice number that they gave us. I'm going to interrupt for one second, Debbie. Uh, I don't want people to panic because um, she is going through this pretty quickly. We will be doing two uh, QuickBooks webinars coming up in November, and I will put those links at the end where we will concentrate on desktop and then on the online version, and we will be going through these things a lot slower. This is just to give you a basic idea, so I don't want people to panic that they have to learn all this right now, <laughs> okay? No, I'm glad you mentioned that. This is really just to give you a sense of comfort and understanding of what it looks like and how it's used. It's not the detail on how you're going to use it. So I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, so we're gonna just do one more here. So a $250 bill we have to Holly Electrics. Now we know they have net 60, so we have longer to pay that bill. And we're going to go ahead and record this. Um, Oh. Yep, um, cost of goods sold. And then this is for a customer. So we're actually gonna bill this forward to a customer. We're gonna bill it forward to Fran Smallson. So I can tag Fran here, it's billable. I might wanna track sometime that it's for a customer but I'm not gonna put it forward on their invoice but at this time we're gonna put it forward on their invoice. So again, this is just an example to see what it looks like. So now we've done two things with that entry. We've recorded a bill that we need to pay and we've also set it up so it can go on an invoice. So now let's visit the customer center. And again, this is a little bit familiar. We saw this a few minutes ago, all the customers that we have and who owns, who owes the company money. And here's Fran, but Fran's not showing up as having a balance yet. Well, we have to create her invoice. So we're gonna go ahead and create an invoice. And we're gonna say it's for Fran. And QuickBooks is gonna let us know right away, oh, you have an outstanding bill. Would you like to add it to this invoice? We're going to say yes, but if you ever, for some reason, didn't want to add it at that moment and do it later, you can. And now this is going to allow us to choose our $250 charge to Holly Electronics and put it right here on the invoice for her. And we can put this for Holly Electronics. forget the typing. There we go. So we know that was four. And we can save and close it. And now we'll see that we have a $250 invoice. Fran owes us $250. So now we've recorded that. We can go back here. We'll say a little bit of time goes by. Fran received her invoice. She's going to go ahead and pay it. We have our check from Fran for $250. That's great. We love when we get paid. We're going to go to her invoice. Now we see it here. There's a $250 invoice and we're going to be able to receive the payment. So yep, Holly Electronics, receive payment, $250. I would always put the check number in there. That will also always be valuable information. Now it shows her balance is at zero. We save and close and we save and close. And now Fran is at a balance of zero. Yay, we got paid. Now you may have noticed when we first started, if your eye caught it, that here we had the number one before. We had one check that was waiting to go to the bank. Now we have two because Fran paid us. What QuickBooks will do is kind of have this holding place for your checks because you don't necessarily run to the bank the minute you get a check. Depends on the size of the check, I would imagine. You might collect a few before you go. So this is where we just kind of hold all the checks until we're ready to go to the bank. And that's when we do that extra step of putting it in the check register when we've actually gone to the bank. So here we'll go ahead and say, yep, we did go to the bank. And we'll put the date that we actually, we got the check from Fran on the 18th, but we didn't get to the bank until the next day. We wanna make sure that matches and we'll save and close it. And now we'll see our recorded deposit. We'll go back to one. We visit our check register again. We'll be able to see our payment, our deposit from Fran. And if we ever see the deposit and say, who is that from again? We can always double click. Oh, that's right. That was the $250 that Fran paid us. So again, just an example of what invoicing looks like 
we'll just jump into looking at the check register, all the money that goes out, all the money that comes in. And then when we see the check marks, we know that's because the reconciliation process has happened. So the business owner took the bank statement and they looked at their QuickBooks and they made sure all the transactions matched. And when that did, they go through that process and puts checks there. And we know that that month is closed and everything worked out well for that month. And then one last thing that I'll show you is the reporting. So again, look at these reports, 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 what more could you want? But let's go look at the profit and loss. This is going to tell us how much money came in and how much money went out. So here we have December 1st through 15th. And actually, typically we look at a month at a time. We wouldn't usually look at uh, two weeks at a time or 15 days. So here we go. Here we have our profit and loss for the month of December. We can see all the money that came in, the cost of goods sold. Here we see all the expenses that went out, yeah, all the expenses that were paid that month officer compensation, accounting fees, and the bottom line, net income. So Carl made a nice profit in the month of December, looking at his income and his expenses. Now he may also wanna look at this report um, by class, because you may remember we took that one bill, we divided it by class between the Bayshore and the St. Thomas location. You can also do a report that will tell you that, and then it will total it on the side. And this unclassified tells us, oh gee, you know, Carl, you forgot to specify this, this income, which place it goes to. So it gives you an opportunity to see it there. So that's a typical profit and loss. And then the other report that you can see through QuickBooks is that you would wanna look at is the balance sheet. And we'll just look at a standard balance sheet. And balance sheet has an ending date that doesn't always have a beginning date, it's usually a mark in time of what it was up to that point. And here we can see what the checking account balance was. We mentioned Carl had a good checking account balance, what he has in the cash drawers and savings, how much his clients owe us, inventory, so kind of the, the net value of the business with all the assets put together. Then we can look at what he owes. Oh, and there's still somewhere here, trucks. And then we can look at what he owes to his vendors. Out, you know, he's got money out in gift certificates. Um, his payroll liabilities, sales tax payable. And then we say they balance because we have the liabilities and the equity, which should come to the same sum total as the assets, which they do. So good informative report, a picture of a point in time. So that's what I was going to show you on QuickBooks Online. I'm sorry, QuickBooks Desktop. And now I'm going to switch to QuickBooks Online. Well, and we'll see if it's saved. You know, I'm going to have to do a search because it defaults to my QuickBooks account, but that's okay. That I can hold it open. And now we're going to look at Craig's design and landscape. I, I've just put the link for the Intuit online version. Um, we do have some questions. Do you want to go through oh, some of those really quick? Let's do that. Should I okay. go back to the desktop to do the questions? No, or? no, you don't okay. have to. Um, the gentleman that was asking about Sage to QuickBooks, he has a follow-up. He mm -hmm. says the reason he's looking at switching is because that more people do know QuickBooks. Um, do you have any thoughts on that? Should he, is it difficult to switch between the two? Uh, he actually started with is starting with a business that has Sage already, but he wants to switch to QuickBooks. Yeah, I do believe he's right as far as the availability of resources to help him with that. If he's got access to a couple good resources, I would really look at the necessity of changing. When you do the integration, there's a process to it. You're going to need to double check, make sure all the coding stayed, that you didn't lose anything, and not that you would lose transactions, but sometimes you lose the coding. And then you're now going to need to learn a new software system and get used to that as well. So it's a lot to do when you're trying to switch. If you need to switch, then you need to switch. Just plan for those things. Know who your resources are. Have a plan for the transition over to make sure it's going to go well. And I would say do some training on the new product, unless you know it already, but do some training on the new product in advance. So once you're in there, you're not strapped by not knowing how to use it. Um, there's, there, there's some, yeah. Go ahead. No, are I was there, just gonna say there's something to be said if it is working about keeping it, but it sounds like there's enough reasons that he's considering making a switch. And I certainly understand that. Okay, and what do you think about the reports provided by Sage? Uh, are QuickBooks reports better, equal? Um, I think they are equal. I think, I gotta say, I'm, I'm a Sage fan. <laughs> they do a really nice job too. So, um, but again, what he might be able to do is to go into these applications that we're using today and look at some of the reports and see how they compare to what he's getting now. Okay, the rest of the questions we have are a little bit more generic, so we'll save those till the end. Okay. Terrific. Um, and let's show you, now we're looking at QuickBooks Online. I'm glad I handled those questions because it gave you a couple of minutes to look at a dashboard that looks very different than what we just looked at. 
So if you know QuickBooks Desktop and you're thinking about switching to online, that's absolutely fine, but you need to become familiar and realize they are not the same at all. QuickBooks Desktop is an application, QuickBooks Online is a website and they work differently. So it's, it's, not, a, it's not an upgrade, it's moving to a different application altogether. So this is the desktop that QuickBooks Online provides and you'll notice we don't have the commands along the top like we did with desktop. Most of what we need is going to be down the side here and then also under this tab when we click here. So again, this is familiar, right? Customer, vendor, employee, other. So kind of same headings arranged a bit differently. And then some of what you need will be found behind this gear or under this gear. So company information, lists, tools. And again, QuickBooks Online offers multiple ways to get in and do the same thing. Very, very different look than what we saw before and kind of a synopsis of all things that's going on with the business. So first thing we'll do, we're gonna follow our footsteps from before. We're going to look at the chart of accounts and this is one of the ways to get there. So we'll look at a chart of accounts in, in uh, QuickBooks Online. And some similarities, we, you know, checking, savings, accounts receivable, right? We're used to this. Undeposited funds, we've talked about that a bit. Assets. And then as we get down, income, different ways that income. This business has a lot of income accounts. They really like to divide out how the money's coming in. And then the full list of expenses. And a lot of these will be familiar. We've already seen these. We've seen cost of goods sold, um, insurance costs. The way here, the way they check job, track job expenses, legal fees. So, um, so it looks very similar, a little different. The other one, if you remember down here on the left, you can add a new account. When we look at online, that's done right here. You click here, you can add a new account. If you want to modify or get rid of an account you have, that would be done here. So you can edit or make it inactive. So it's always there, it's just inactive. So another way of looking at the same information, the same chart of accounts. So let's do what we did before, which was first enter a vendor bill. So now we're going to go to new. We're going to enter a new bill under vendor. And again, not meant to be training, just kind of want you to get a sense of how one looks compared to the other. And for our vendor here, we're going to pay books by Bessie. Bessie's our bookkeeper. And we know that her bill's due in 15 days because we program that in the net 15 from when we get it. So the bill date defaults to today's date, but chances are the bill date was probably a couple of days ago when she sent it to you and it will calculate for you automatically when it's due by. And as always, we wanna put in the invoice number that we got from Bessie. And because QuickBooks is familiar with Bessie, it has already put in the right account. I don't even have to put in, if you remember before I had to put in utility, I didn't have to put in accounting here. It knows Bessie goes under accounting and we can put in here what it's for. So for her September bookkeeping service, and the bill is $75. This isn't going to be billed forward to a client. It's not going to be taxed. It has nothing to do with the customer. So we have everything we need for Bessie right here. Yeah, the, the link I gave everyone, um, it says that the people are saying that they have to log in to use it. Does that sound right? I did not think you had to log in to use it. That's interesting. I had to just um, click an I'm not a robot box. So that I don't know. Okay. Okay. Thank um, you. Let me see. Can we, and this is this, oh, this is, let me try this. Just capture part of it. Just take one minute and see if, oh yeah, see it changes to intuit.com. I'm not sure, Teresa. I'm so sorry. I did not have to log in, so I'm not quite sure. Okay, well, we'll work on that and we'll include it in the information that we okay. send them um, uh, tomorrow they, with the recording. Okay, and if they want to do a search on Craig's Landscape and Design, that might be another way to get at it. And if it does have you log in, then that might just be uh, Intuit wanting to capture information of who's trying out their product. And perhaps because I'm in and out of Intuit all day, maybe that's why it did not ask me. So I apologize for that. Okay. I didn't pick up on that. All right, no worries. All right. Um, so we can go ahead and we're going to save and close our payment to Bessie. So we know that we owe Bessie $75. So let's go back, we'll look at our dashboard. I also like the banking dashboard. So this is just the bank accounts that you link. So um, Craig has his checking and his savings and his credit card link. So that means all these transactions are automatically getting downloaded from the bank. And all he has to do is go ahead and put the right category in and add them. Or in some cases it might say, oh, he already put in his deposit of 868.15. And when the bank imports it, it recognizes that it's there. And then you can just go ahead and match. And this will automatically add it to your register. And you don't need to do anything more. So this is a convenience that you don't see. 
on QuickBooks Desktop. So we'll do that. And these are just all the transactions that have come in from the bank that haven't yet been added to QuickBooks Online. QuickBooks, or to the account, to the check account. Uh, QuickBooks Desktop has a similar feature. It, um, it is not as contemporary as this. It is not as easy to use as this when it comes to adding transactions from the bank. But let's go ahead and quickly and let's look at Bessie paid. So again, we're going to show paying out of an invoice. There are a lot of different invoices here based on this being a training application, but we're going to focus on Bessie. So here's our invoice. We owe Bessie $75. So we want to go ahead and get her paid. Um, I saw this when I was uh, looking at this ahead of time. It looks like Bessie must have a balance in there from this training account, but we're going to focus on the $75 that we're paying her now. And we're going to go ahead and save and close. And now if we look at our bank register, so here's our Again, not for training, just to kind of go through and show. Here's our bank register. It's going to look a lot like it did in QuickBooks Desktop. And we can find our $75 that we paid to Bessie. Um, but just to show you what it looks like. And you can have this, you can also sort if you'd rather have the current date on the bottom as opposed to the top. But what I realized here, what I did with Bessie is, um, I don't think I keep Bessie to be paid by the checking account because I don't see our payments to Bessie there. So I'm going to go ahead and find Bessie. Here is what, you know, the equivalent of the vendor center that we saw in QuickBooks desktop. Here are all the vendors and how much we owe to the different vendors. So let me find my payment that I just made to Bessie, our $75 payment. And is it somewhere I want to see? Let me see the payment. There we go. Ah, look at that. I didn't key it to the checking account. So when I went to the checking register, I didn't see it there. I had it keyed as though we paid it by credit card. So there we go. So it catches us when we see that stuff, when we miss it. So now if we go to the banking and we're in the checking account, we're going to go to the bank register. And now we'll see the $75 that we paid to Bessie right here. And if we wanted to get the detail on that, we could go ahead and click on it and take a look at exactly what we paid her and when. So this may look familiar from when we did it a few minutes ago. So we're gonna do one more bill. We're gonna do like we did on the other. We're gonna do a bill that we then put on a customer invoice so you can see what the invoicing looks like. And here we're going to, we have a bill for Hicks Hardware. We didn't enter the terms, so QuickBooks doesn't know, but I can see on the bill we have from Hicks that they're net 15. So QuickBooks is going to adjust that. I'm gonna put in my bill number. Now this is a bill that we're sending through to a customer. So we're gonna go ahead and choose um, cost of goods sold. Let's see how we find it here. We're gonna do maintenance and repairs. So job expenses, cost of labor, maintenance and repairs. And this is uh, sprinkler heads. We purchased sprinkler heads at Hicks Hardware for the client. It was $137. Now this is billable. We wanna send this through to a client invoice. So we're gonna check billable. We're not gonna check taxable because we're not gonna talk about tax, but if it was something taxable, you'd go ahead and check that. And our client in this case is Diego Rodriguez. So now with this, we're doing two things. We're recording the bill that's owed to the vendor, and we're also going to put it on a customer invoice. So we're sure to recoup that expense. And if we go back here, we can look at pay bills and we'll see that we have now this bill to Hicks Hardware. We're not gonna pay that yet. We're really gonna focus on the invoice. So now we're gonna to go to the customer center and we're going to go ahead and create an invoice. So a little bit different with customers, doesn't say customer center, it actually says sales. So these are things you'll learn when you pick up QuickBooks, if you pick up QuickBooks online. And here we see Diego and Diego doesn't owe us any money yet because we haven't created that invoice. So let's go ahead and click on his. Oh, and we see it here. Here's a billable expense, $137. Perfect, that's what we need to bill him. QuickBooks says, would you like to create an invoice? Thank you for asking. Yes, we would. So now we have for Diego, the dates, the sprinkler head, and how much it was. And we're going to go ahead. Now we can email this right to Diego. So QuickBooks Online, we'll let you, we've got his email here. We can go ahead and say yes, save and send. It will go right off to Diego. He'll get it and then he'll be able to pay it. We're just going to save and close it. And now it shows this $137 billable expense that we initially saw is closed because now it's wrapped into this invoice. So if you ever see an expense here that's open, you know you haven't yet billed it to your client. They make it very easy, very nice for you. So we'll come back to our dashboard. 
we'll think, all right, a little bit of time goes by. Look at this, we got a check from Diego, excellent. Let's go ahead and receive that payment. So we'll go back to the customer center. We'll find Diego. There's the $137 that he owes. And now we're gonna receive the payment. And we'll put the payment date. He paid us by check. We always wanna put the check number. It's going to go into undeposited funds. So that at the end of the day, we'll take that to the bank. $137. And we're gonna save and close. And now if we look, Diego's balance is zero. He doesn't owe us any more money. Great. So much like we have the undeposited funds, if you remember that red one or that red two in QuickBooks Desktop, QuickBooks Online doesn't have, that doesn't call it undeposit, undeposited funds. It calls it bank deposit. It's going to show everything we need to take to the bank. And here's that check from Diego. So we received it against the invoice. We haven't gone to the bank yet. Once we go to the bank and come back, we're like, okay, great. We're going to go ahead and deposit that. And we'll do save and close. And now we've completed the loop. So if we look at our bank account, there's our checking account, looking at our banking dashboard, we'll be able to go. And here's our payment for Diego. QuickBooks Online loves to give suggestions. Um, when you first use it, you have a lot of pop-up windows and then eventually they go away. Uh, so here's our payment from Diego, $137. So we got the bill from the vendor, we put it onto an invoice, we got paid, that loop has been closed. And then let's see, um, let's take a look. Oh, and I do wanna show you, since we're in the bank register, looks somewhat similar to the QuickBooks desktop and that it's just noting by date, check number, expense, bill payment, who it was to, how much and all. But when it imports from the bank, it actually has these green squares. So when you see this, you know the information came right from the bank and it matched to what you had. So it's a great way to look at this entry. The C means that, as the business owner, you went into that entry when it was in the for review, when it first came in from the bank and you moved it over and said, yep, this is a good, this is a good expense. This is a good deposit. Yep, this matches my records. And then when you're ready to reconcile, you'll go ahead and do it all. So some of these were keyed in and some of these were brought in from the bank feeds. This one I think is not an old enough account to show any reconciliation other than their opening equity balance. So I can't show you the same thing there, but I will show you a little bit about the reconcile. We'll see how far we can get and see how different it is. So we want to get started and we'll say maybe later. So we want to reconcile our checking account and our most recent balance when we started, $5,000 is when we opened the account and the ending balance is different. We've had money come in and we've had money go out and the net result at the end of the month, we had $3,800 and I think we can do So this is what the reconciliation window looks like in QuickBooks Online. We saw the desktop one where you have the two columns, you have the expenses on one side and the deposits on the other. This has it all mixed together. And it will also give you a hand in many times. It will go ahead and identify some that it already knows has come in. So here, you're just checking, going through your statement and checking off what the statement has versus what you have here. And ideally in the end, you get a nice zero here. And then you know you've done it. Everything is proofed out. Everything the bank has matches everything that you have in QuickBooks. And then you can go ahead and finish and you're done and you can close that month. Take a look at the financial reports. Make sure they ring true, that they look right to you. Investigate anything that doesn't and you're good to go. So the reconciliation process on QuickBooks Online is really one of my favorite features because they really do automate it and make it much easier for you. So we'll go in and look at the last thing, which is to look at the reports. So we looked at the profit and loss and we looked at the balance sheet on QuickBooks Desktop. We'll do the same thing here. So here we have a profit and loss. And this is, looks like for year to date. So let's look at, we're gonna change this because you can, you can do this, uh, you can choose, let's do last month, we'll do September. And then we'll run report. And we can look at how much came in in income. Looks like there was a discount, so negative income. Um, what came in through land, landscaping services and through the different job materials. Full cost of goods sold. So total profit for that month for September was 7,941.52. Now let's look at what it cost to earn the 7,941. So all the expenses. So equipment rental, job materials, bookkeeping fee, all of that. 
and then we'll go down and look at his profit for the month. So after all expenses, he ended his month in the black. That's great. Income 1393.32. If he had lost money, so if he spent more than he took in, we'd have a net loss and it would show that as well. So it's always good to know, you know, one way or the other, the information is good. If you ever had a question, if um, you wanted to say, well, what makes up this fountain and garden lighting? That seems, you know, I don't remember that. You can click on it and it will show you all the entries that made up that total. So you can go back and look. So here it shows you the date that it was invoiced. So it was something that went on a customer invoice, um, who the vendor was, um, what it was for. So the notes that were put in. And then when you've seen that, you can go back to the report summary. So anything you wanna take a look at and see exactly what it was, you can just click on it and see what's made, what makes up that number. So really convenient, really easy to go in and out. And then we'll also go back to the report list and we'll look at a balance sheet and we'll do the same time frame. So we'll do last month. And we can take a look at what the assets and liabilities and equity were at that point in time. So as of September 15th, what the bank balances were, how much was owed by the customers, the inventory total, how much is in the undeposited funds that needs to get taken to the bank, the assets, so the value of the truck, and then also the liabilities. What does Craig owe to his vendors? What does he have due on his credit card? Um, some of the other liabilities that they have, he's got a loan he needs to pay back, so he's probably working on that. Um, note payable and equity, how much money Craig has in the business. So again, 24, 336, 29. It's going to match the top half of the equation, 24, 336, 29. So everything balances out. And again, this is information that's great snapshot, helps the business owner understand what's going on with their business. So profit and loss report, balance sheet report, two things that you should always run as a business owner after the bookkeeping is updated. If the bookkeeping hasn't been updated and the reconciliation hasn't been done, it's really not worth running these reports because you're not looking at verified information yet. So this is what I have to show you in QuickBooks Online. Are there questions I can answer while we're still in here? Because I think time-wise we're doing okay. Yeah, most of my questions, I have a, a, lar a large group of questions about the difference between online and desktop. Do you want to okay. address those now or do you want to wait? You know what, let's go. Let's, we're gonna leave um, QuickBooks Online for now. So let's go back to the presentation and okay. we'll start. That's where we'll start talking about that. So let me get my slides up. Okay, great. And so we looked at Carl's computer shop. That was our desktop company. So we looked at the dashboard, the banking, invoicing reports, and the accounting, which is the chart of the accounts. And here we did the same with QuickBooks Online. So oh, I didn't get to talk about this card though. Let's talk for a minute just about QuickBooks Online because it does also have different versions like QuickBooks Desktop does different names, different price points, all versions track kind of similar to what we saw with desktop income and expenses, sales tax. You can do it by job or class. It can send estimates and invoices and of course run your, your so important financial reports. Also again, higher end versions provide different access as well. So you can have multiple users, you can track projects, you can do your bill management. You can also have it accessed by roles. So if you have someone who's helping you and there are parts of the online um, product that you don't need them to see that does not is not required for their job, you can decide what they have access to in your business and what they don't. Um, the advantage with QuickBooks Online is it can be accessed from any computer. You can use it on your computer when you're at work. You can use it on your computer when you're at home. If you have someone helping you with the bookkeeping, they can do it from wherever they are. And they don't have that same thing like the desktop version is where you have to be actually in front of that computer or have remote access to it to be able to utilize it. And it's scalable as in desktop. You can use, pick it and you can use it as your business grows and it's going to serve you really well. So, and we looked at that. All right, so I'm gonna jump ahead to how do I decide which QuickBooks is right for me? So let's talk about some of the differences. We talked about the access. Is, is accessing it remotely going to be an issue for you? Do you need to have online because you don't have that computer that you can host it on and keep it there? If you were to use QuickBooks desktop, one thing that's really important is from the day you install it, have your backup plan ready because you will need to back up your QuickBooks desktop file on a regular basis. Um, and you don't want to back it up and save the only other copy on that same computer where you have the file because if something happens to that computer, it doesn't matter that you have it backed up, you lost everything. So you want to back it up on a memory stick. You want to back it up on the cloud, maybe both. It's not bad to have you know things backed up a couple of times. We host the QuickBooks desktop for a number of our clients. 
they get backed up three different ways. We make sure, make sure. So QuickBooks Desktop, you need to back up. QuickBooks Online, you do not need to. QuickBooks holds responsibility for that. Though I will tell you, I know some people who do back up their online. So think about your internet connection. You know, do you have really strong connection? You're going to want a strong, reliable internet connection if you're using online. If not desktop, when it's on your computer, you don't need the internet to access it. So think about how you want to use it that way. Think about what the cost is. Do you want to purchase it every three years like you do with QuickBooks Desktop? It's got a higher price tag. And I would say every three years because they support their versions for three years at a time. You wouldn't want to be more than three years out with it. Or do you want to do a lower monthly subscription with QuickBooks Online where you're paying every month instead of paying a big amount every year. Look at the features. We just kind of went through just so you could get a sense of it, which kind of feels right to you. Do you like the QuickBooks desktop look and how that works? Do you prefer the online? Is that more familiar to you? Does that work better with your mind and how you like to do business? Look at the features that you need. Do you need invoicing, inventory tracking? Are you going to be preparing 1099s in January? You know, Think about what features it has. And then also think about the support. QuickBooks Online comes with customer support. Not all QuickBooks desktop versions do. So think about from a support standpoint. Um, but let me see. All right, so I'm going to stop here. So Teresa, why don't we go with your questions now? Uh, okay. Um, so, well, so you answered the question, can more than one person access your QuickBooks online version? Yes. Okay. Yes. Let me get rid of this one. Um, do... Are all reports on the desktop version available on the online version? I do believe they are, yes. Okay. Um, let's see. It says QuickBooks Online can be used on any computer as opposed to QuickBooks Desktop where it can only be used on one computer. Is this, pref is it, which is preferable, the desktop or the online version? I don't know if one's preferable or the other. I think the the slide I have up now would help you decide how to choose which one based on access, internet connection, fee usability, and all of that. So I don't think it's um, one is preferred over the other. They're just very different. You have to see which one feels like the one you're going to use. And now that you've seen them, you can see they're very different. So knowing one does not mean knowing the other. So you do really want to make a wise choice and hopefully pick the one that you're going to stick with. QuickBooks Desktop can be converted to QuickBooks Online. It's um, QuickBooks Online to QuickBooks Desktop can be done. It's not pretty. I don't recommend it. So um, just keep that in mind when you make your choice. If, you know, I wouldn't recommend that you start online saying, if it doesn't work for me, I'll switch to desktop. That really only works the other way. I, you can put the desktop version on a server as well. So that you can, can definitely put it on a server and there are businesses that will do it for you and uh, charge you a monthly fee so that it lives on a server and then different people can access it. So absolutely, but it can only live in one place. Right, um, so if you're a first time user, do you have a, do you prefer online versus desktop? You know, it's really tough because I think it's a, a personal choice. I'm a big fan of QuickBooks desktop uh, and, but probably because it's what I learned on and I was most familiar with it. I have someone in my office who will talk about QuickBooks online as the day is long and she loves it and she's fluent and she's in and out and that's her preference. So I don't think there's a wrong choice to make. So I think they're both really great products. They work differently. They do a lot the same thing. I will say that the online version has some really nice contemporary features and a look and feel to it that's quite different from desktop. Um, okay, somebody's asking, do we need a bookkeeper for using QuickBooks ourselves or should we overlap with a bookkeeper before switching over to QuickBooks? Well, if you're talking about switching over, I'd be curious what you're on now and what you're going to. And, and how you're going to get there. If you're talking about starting with QuickBooks, you don't need a bookkeeper to do that. QuickBooks will walk you through the steps. If you have specific things that you like, once you set it up and there are things that you don't see that you would like to have, it's certainly not a bad idea to consult with a bookkeeper. Your CPA can help you as well. Uh, the rates you pay one over the other will be quite different. So think about what you need um, out of it, but you can set it up without a bookkeeper. But I would say after you're a good few months in, if you're reconciling every month and it looks great, then I think you're in good shape. But if things go wrong, it's really important to catch that immediately so that it doesn't sit there for a while and then mistakes get repeated month after month. So it is possible to just move right in and, and do a really solid job and be happy with what you're seeing. You'll be the one who knows when you look at it. You'll be able to tell. Do you think it's helpful to when you have initially set up your QuickBooks to consult with an accountant to make sure that your chart of accounts are set up correctly? Yes, I do agree. You should speak with someone who can help you with the chart of accounts. It does not have to be an accountant. They would do a great job for sure, but it could be someone who's very experienced in bookkeeping, like a score advisor, a score coach, or it could be a bookkeeper who can help you with that as well. 
Okay, um, so somebody wants to ask if QuickBooks is appropriate for a small restaurant startup. Uh, which version is recommended if you're working with a POS system already? That's a great question. I do like the way the POSs integrate with QuickBooks Online uh, better than I do desktop, but that also may be because that's where more of my integration experience is. That might also be something that you could do is check with others if you have others in the restaurant community that you can ask, kind of find out what people are using and what they like. You'll get some great advice from people who are in the field and will tell you that. But I also think it's important to do that research and look at the POS that you have. Go online, see what not only that the POS company talks about integrating with QuickBooks, but see what the community is saying about that particular integration, just to be sure it's going to work the way that you want. Okay. Uh, the last two questions I have are more um, generic QuickBook questions. Um, do you want to hold those for a bit? No, I'm, I'm happy to do those. We can do okay. Um, how do I record payments made by an owner's personal credit card? Is there a way to do that in QuickBooks? There is. And it's important that you make that distinction. So extra points to you for that question. Because when you are using a personal credit card, and um, let me think of the best way to phrase it. So you're using your personal credit card for business expenses. You do want to record that expense so that you can capture it. Now, the difference is, is are you going to be paying that part of the credit card that has the business purchases on it straight from the business, or are you paying it personally, and then you're going to reimburse yourself from the business. But you do need to, if you're doing it where you're just paying the expense, let's say it was a trip to Staples, and you put it on your personal card, and it was $125, because unfortunately, you had to buy printer ink. And um, you've gone ahead and you've paid it front, you, the $125 you paid right to the credit card. You said, here's the, you know, I'm going to write a check from my personal check to cover my personal expenses on my credit card. And I'm going to write a check for my business to cover the $125 printer ink. That's great. You're going to log it like any expense. You're going to put it in there that you paid it to Chase or to whomever you paid it. And that's fine. It's an expense. You paid, you move on. If it's something that you paid personally and say, okay, well, now I want to pay myself back because I paid that $125 personally. And you're going to write a check to yourself for $125. You want to make a notation when you do it in QuickBooks that that was actually you reimbursing yourself for something that you paid for personally. You don't want it to look like it's income or you know revenue to yourself. So you want to identify that as um, an owner payment that was made on a personal credit card. So hopefully I did a good enough job explaining that one. That gets a little tricky, mm -hmm. but that does go back to kind of that notation I put early in the presentation. Any way you can possibly not intertwine your personal and your business finances, you are going to be so much better off. So these are why we tell people, please, please, please try not to do that. But it happens. I grabbed the wrong card and made a payment. So oh, shoot, that was my work card. I didn't mean to do that or the other way around. So accidents happen. You address those, but try not to make that a regular habit because it does get confusing. Yeah, I, I can say from personal experience, uh, as a bookkeeper, um, I worked with a client that intertwined oh. everything and it was a nightmare. And, and basically what it came down to is she ended up having to pay someone to sort that all out. And yeah. I don't think she would have if she hadn't done that in the first place. No. So, yeah, I'm a little on both sides of that. I, I tell people, please, please, please don't do it. But let me tell you, when we get those cleanups, it's really good money for exactly the reason you said. It's very, we're like, oh, well, it's too bad they did that, but you know, we can help out and it'll be a good payday for us. So, um, so just really be mindful of that. That's probably maybe the biggest caution I give new business owners is try not to intertwine personal and business and document everything. So if you, if you are paying personally for business expenses, you need to document that. So that can be accounted for in your books. So you can get, you know, credit for that as far as, you know, ownership in the business money you put in. Okay, um, question about taxes. Does QuickBooks support having two taxes applied to an invoice? Example, city and state. It does. Um, I wish I could go back and look at it. I'm not prepared to show on taxes. Yes, you can put multiple taxes um, for that. So, mm -hmm. and I believe it's in desktop and online both, you can do that. Yeah, you just set up the tax item, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the next question they have is, I don't see a summary for sales tax in the list of reports. Um, how is that configured and how does um, QuickBooks provide that information? That is, and if I can actually, I'm gonna see if I can go back and show you that because I think that's a great question. And I think I still have my windows open. Let me see if it will. Oh, there we go. Um, so I'm gonna look at desktop first. Um, you can see right here, there's a managed sales tax icon. So you can go in and, um, well, here's where you can set up it, but you can look at your sales tax liability. 
your revenue summary. You can look at different reports here. So this is like a little sales tax center where you can do a lot here. But I do believe if you go to reporting, um, is it here and I'm not seeing it? Accounting and taxes. And then you can do some different uh, uh, different tax here. Don't let me see, is this the taxes that specify? I think sales tax center yeah. vendors and payables. Where am I? I know it's here and I'm missing it, right? It's uh, uh, up to vendors and payables. Uh, down, You're, it's just under. Oh, sorry. Down, down. There it is. <laughs> there, thank you. Oh, there yeah, you go. No problem. Yes, thank you. My goodness. Uh, so yeah, so you've got it there too. Sales tax revenue summary. So yeah, it can do that. Uh, let's see where it is on QuickBooks Online. Um, QuickBooks Online, I like because you can search reports. So here we can do sales tax liability report. And then you can also bookmark these. There's nothing to report here. Um, but yes, so you can do that in both versions. I've just posted the two um, registration um, links for the upcoming webinars that we'll be offering, one for the online version and one for the desktop version so that you can mm -hmm. register. I will also provide those when I send the recording link. Just oh, a, a heads up on that. Um, All right. Okay. And, uh, if Anyone has any more questions, please um, get those into Q&A. Um, and, right. and that's and then all I have for now. Up, okay, with a couple here. Let me see if I've done this one yet. Um, so we've talked about this already. None of this is new. And we've talked about this. Um, but where can you get training on QuickBooks? So just a couple suggestions. Intuit.com. And then clicking on QuickBooks support and training. You'll get um, some training there. If you have access at all to lynda.com, I'm such a fan of lynda.com and it's a, it's um, kind of an educational training database that I believe is now owned by LinkedIn. I don't know if it always was. Um, it's a subscription-based application. So if you wanted to pay the subscription for a month, I think it's around $30 a month and you can get in there and you can get lots of training on QuickBooks Desktop, QuickBooks Online. They have wonderful videos. There are quizzes incorporated in it. It's really terrific. But I would say before getting a subscription, see if you can access it through your public library for free. Our public library did have free access to it, which was really nice to have. So you might be able to get it at no cost. YouTube is full of all kinds of QuickBooks training videos. So don't hesitate to look there. Local education, adult education evening programs. I know they're all online now. A lot of them will have QuickBooks training classes. So that might be a place to look. You can always Google your question and you'll find an answer. You know, how do I find a sales tax summary report in QuickBooks desktop? And if you Google that, you're going to get um, a lot of answers that walk you through how to do that. Getting some user manuals through Barnes & Noble or Amazon or Intuit. There's all kinds of user manuals. And I have to tell you that QuickBooks for Dummies, it's a good resource. So have it handy. So if you need to look up something quickly, you've got it. It's not a bad resource. And of course, the SCORE program has training. And I think about what we haven't talked about yet. Just to remind you that learning one or the other, it's a process. It's not something you'll learn in a day or in a sitting, but each time you'll learn a little bit more and you'll become more comfortable with it. Um, and just think of it as a process. Prioritize keeping your books up to date. You will be so happy you did for the reasons we mentioned earlier, having to do with being able to take advantage of opportunities that you might not foresee, but also like we were just talking about with um, and not having your personal stuff intertwined, you know, and then you're not keeping it up to date because it's frustrating. So really keep it up to date. Have confidence in your ability to do your own books. I have no doubt you can do it. And if you need to wave that white flag and get a little help, you know, then you go ahead and do that. Call for help when you need to. Know who your go-to is. And as I mentioned before, have a plan to back up your desktop file the very first day it's installed. And a plan that includes backing it up somewhere other than the actual computer that it's on. And that's everything I have for you today. Um, any other questions that came up, Teresa? Uh, not quite yet, but we'll give people time to okay. go ahead and put questions in. I have put up the poll. Um, I, I think uh, you were mentioning about um, somebody, but some people had asked about multiple people being able to use it. I think even in that situation, you need to have a plan. Who's touching which parts of QuickBook? QuickBook, QuickBooks. You don't want the same, you know, you don't want different people that are responsible for entering bills, for example, so that things get mixed up or mark your bills as they come in that you've entered them into QuickBooks, you know, yeah. so that way you're not over, you know, working over each other. Um, so, but you definitely need a plan if you've got more than one person touching your QuickBooks. Mm -hmm. And the QuickBooks will eventually limit how many people can be in based on the subscription that you have, how many users and how many users you can have. So think about who really needs to see your business financials. Um, and then 
grant access to them only. Okay. And then also a reminder, if you want to meet with um, someone from SCORE, uh, go ahead and put uh, put that information in chat and we will reach out to you. Um, I'm not seeing any more questions being posted. Is there any, do you have anything else? Any Gloria, do you have anything that you want to add that maybe we didn't touch on? Uh, no, no, just to uh, let us know if you want to meet and also just to uh, take a look at the the upcoming workshops, uh, not only for this, these two QuickBooks coming up, but some of our, our, our others on the list as well. Okay, great. Um, okay, I, I think that, I think we've hit on everything. Um, thank you, everybody. Yeah, so thank uh, I think, go ahead, Gloria. Uh, just thanking Debbie and everybody that uh, joined us. Okay. Yeah, thank right. you very much. Thanks for having me. Okay, um, thank you all and um, have a good day. Bye-bye.